Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. So again, this is Mike Schwartz. I'm here with Melissa Gilman. Um, thanks everybody once again for joining us to learn a little bit more about the changes to the school calendar, uh, school annual calendar, and how it is used for tracking ABM. For those of you who've watched the recorded video that we did, this is going to be very similar to that. We're going to go through the same slides and through the same demo or similar demo. Um, but certainly, this is a chance for folks to ask questions as well. Uh, on your GoToMeeting control panel, you should see a place where you can um, enter questions. So as we're going through this, please uh, ask questions if or slow us down if we need to. Um, we got a couple of questions ahead of time, so I'll make sure we address those as well. Um, and I know that there are some folks who are fairly new to the whole I4C world on the call too. So I am going to go somewhat slowly through this, uh, although it may seem fast for those folks anyway. Um, so I appreciate those of you who have been around for quite some time and um, are experts at this. Um, I appreciate your patience as we might review stuff that, that you're familiar with. Uh, but we think it's important to, to go through it for everyone. Um, so again, um, let's go ahead and get started and do ask questions throughout this. Um, the agenda, as uh, we did in the video, I'm going to talk through a little bit of in introductions just to make sure you realize everyone that's been working hard on this process. Um, we will then go through some slides to help you understand what the school calendars are, how they're changing in terms of now being able to enter hours in addition to days, um, and how that's used for ADM. Uh, I'll go on and do a live demo in our test site, um, so I'll, I'll demo how it works, uh, and then just review the next steps for you. Again, uh, please you know, stop us throughout this and, and ask questions as you have them. Um, as I mentioned, there are many folks who work awfully hard uh, behind the scenes, um, Melissa being chief among them, um, as well as Joe Sherburn, who did most of the development. So many thanks to them. Uh, Dina Raybuck did a ton of work around um, the calculations that are used to calculate ADM, uh, as well as all these other folks uh, in addition. So a lot realized there's been a lot of hard work uh, under the direction of, of Caitlin uh, Davis uh, at the department. This work um, was put in place uh, primarily to, to enable schools to consider um, how many days, not just how many days students are enrolled in school, but how many hours they might be receiving instruction. Um, there was a state law that was passed a few years ago, several years ago, that allows schools to uh, ensure that students are getting enough learning through the hours of instruction. And so this now kind of formulate, formalizes that process. And we'll talk about you know, how it does that. Um, ADM, which is average daily membership, is used to determine many important things. It's to determine um, how much schools receive in funding um, based on the, the ADM of all your students in your school. Um, it's used for accountability. So when we determine if a school is uh, making progress looking at the SAT or looking at the NHSAS state assessment test, um, we use ADM to determine which students you've instructed and, and we only look at students who've been instructed in your school for a certain period of time um, based on their ADM. Um, it's also used for calculating title funds and um, other targeted aid. So we can't stress how important it is that the ADM is accurate for all of your students. You can think of ADM as I mentioned in the video, it's similar to like an FTE that people are more familiar with, a full-time equivalent. Um, you know, typically when you think of staff in a, in a school, for example, you know that some staff may only be part-time um, so their, their FTE may be a 0.5 if they only come in half the time. Um, ADM is the exact same. So it's what percentage of the year was a school student enrolled in your school. Um, so as an example, <clears throat> excuse me, if the number of days enrolled, uh, if the student uh, entered school on the first day of school, we'll take Sam as the example here, and Sam left on January 15th to move out of state, well, we know Sam wasn't in your school for the full year, so Sam isn't a full ADM. Instead, we know if the school's open 360 half days throughout the year, and schools typically have been reported in half days, um, then we're able to calculate Sam's ADM because we know between the first day of school and January 15th, Sam was in school for 182 half days. And so the ADM for Sam becomes 182 divided by 360, which is 0.51 ADM. So basically, it's almost, it's a little bit more than a half of an average daily membership, a half of an ADM, similar thought, half of an FTE if you're thinking about staff. <clears throat> um, I do see that there might have been a question about whether we're um, we sharing the screen, and hopefully you do see my screen. So that looks like it came in before I clicked start. So I think everyone should be seeing my screen now. Um, Melissa, let me know if you're not. 
uh, if anyone chats that they're not. Um, <clears throat> so determining ADM, again, typically had been done through half days. Um, the alternative now uh, is that schools and the system can now calculate ADM in hours. So very similar, uh, if a school was reporting in hours and we knew that Sam was enrolled the first day of school, and again, Sam exited on January 15th, and we know that this school from the first day of the school year till the end of the school year was offering 1,080 hours of instruction. Um, then, and if we know that Sam, having come in on, on the first day of school and leaving on January 15th, had been enrolled for 546 hours of instruction, we calculate ABN the exact same way we did with half days. We just say Sam was there for 546 hours of instruction um, divided by the total number of hours that could have been that he or she would have been there if they were there the full year. And so Sam comes out once again with 546 divided by 180 or 0.5180. <clears throat> One important thing to, to mention and to make sure we're all aware, <clears throat> when we calculate ADM, the school gets credit even if Sam is absent. Um, so if Sam in the first example you know, missed five days of school during that period from the beginning of the year of January 15th, those five half of those five days or 10 half days, they still were counted. And so that 182 would have included both um, the number of days that Sam was in school and the number of days that Sam was absent during that time from the beginning of the year through January 15th. And the same is going to be true for hours. So that's how we calculate ADM, or that's what ADM is. And as I mentioned before, ADM is very important. It's used uh, you know, for some pretty critical things, including the funds that schools receive. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit more about how we actually calculate that ADM. And so, and how we're going to be calculating going forward. Um, let's assume now we have a school that has a calendar that starts <clears throat> on August 31st. We're going to go back to 2004. So we're looking historically at, at a school many, you know, several years ago. Um, and that the school ended on January, on June 7th, 2005. <clears throat> we know that the school had certain vacation days. So Columbus Day, winter recess, you know, maybe snow days, et cetera. And we know that a student entered on 831 and exited on 115. So similar walking through an example we had with Sam. What the system is now able to do is to identify the exact number of days the school was open throughout the entire year and the exact number of days that, this, that um, Sam was actually physically in school, either absent or, or in school. Um, <clears throat> and so we basically build the calendar um, based on the information you provide. So by you telling us that the school started on 8-31-2004, we know that in our little calendar here on 8-30 in yellow is a day that you were in school. We know that the first vacation day might have been Columbus Day. So we know that, well, actually probably Labor Day. Um, so that we know you were in school on the 30th of August. Um, and we know that you might have been in there for on the 1st, the 2nd, and the 3rd of September. We know the 4th was, or the 6th was Labor Day, so there was no school that day. And then we know that you're in school on the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, et cetera, because you told us that school starts on August 31st and goes all the way through June 7th. So we basically put a yellow box or, you know, this is this is just a conceptual way that, we just, that I'm gonna describe it. And we're basically building a calendar where yellow is every day that the school is open. And then based on events that you tell us, such as the winter recess or the Columbus day, we make white or take out the days that there's no school. And so then we basically are counting the number of yellow days, and we know through counting all these that we can determine, for example, that the school was open 168 half days. And we know, for example, that um, the student, Sam, who came in on August 31st was there one day, and then in September, excuse me, find September, was there two days, three days, four days, and we're basically counting up the number of days to determine how many half days um, Sam was in school. And then we can use that to calculate uh, the ABM. So basically, by you telling us the calendar, the start date and end dates, by you telling us some exceptions of things that are happening throughout the year, we're able to determine the number of days throughout the year. And this is a little bit different than what we did in the past. In the past, you actually had to enter in, uh, for those who are familiar with it in the school annual data, you had to tell us the number of half days the school was open. It was called the half days in session. You don't have to do that anymore. Now we're able to calculate that based on the calendar that, you do, that you'll set up. So before I get here, just one more thing I want to mention, I guess, going back to the screen. Um, so um, realize now in calculating ADM, 
were able to determine the number of half days a student was in school or absent and the number of half days the school was in session based on the calendar and based on the start and end date that you enter for a student in, in an EOI record. Um, so you will no longer have to tell us the number of half days in session um, for the school in the calendar. Um, we'll figure that out and I'll show you in a minute. Um, when you submit the EOI records, you'll still enter the number of half days in session and I'm sorry, half days in attendance and half days absent, but we won't use that to calculate the ABM. We will we will strictly use the start date, the student, the date the student entered school, and the date the student exited school. And if he or she started the very first day and exited or didn't exit, was there the entire year, um, we'll know that he or she was there, um, you know, through every day of the school calendar. If we know the student left on January 15th, we'll be able to calculate based on your calendar exactly how many days or hours the student was enrolled during that period. Um, I know there's a question about the dark color here. Again, this calendar is not, you're not gonna see this calendar in the system. This was just my way of describing it to you. Um, what I was trying to show is that the purple or the dark red might be an early release day. And so if you're reporting in hours, that might be less than a full day. So maybe instead of six hours of instruction on that purple day, students only received three hours of instruction. So again, we use that information and I'll show you where you'll, where you'll tell us that there's only three hours as an example. Um, I'll show you where you tell us that. But we basically build that calendar um, or build the information behind the scenes knowing how many hours there are each day and the purple is supposed to represent short days. I'm going to pause for a quick sec 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 second and see if there's any questions I can answer. There's a question about will your EOI uploads still be half days? So your EOI uploads where you have the number of days in attendance and the number of day, uh, half days in attendance and half days absent can still be in, day, in days. You can enter hours for that if that's something your systems can calculate. I mean, typically I suspect your student information systems are still calculating half days for those, um, but you can enter um, hours or days um, in the EOI record for attendance and absences. What's gonna be important is that, that if, you're using hours or days, using those both for attendance and absences. And when we determine how, what percentage of a year a student was absent, and that's for other reports, not for calculating aid, um, we're going to basically look at the ratio between what you've entered in, in attendance and what you've entered in absences. Um, so it won't matter because we're using a ratio, um, it won't matter whether those are days or hours, uh, as long as you're consistent um, for each student record. Um, there's a question about how you notify us about the school closure day. So I'll show you that in just a minute. We'll get to that. So let me know if I missed anything else. Otherwise, I'll keep going. So um, what you need to do um, at the beginning of the year um, for next year, but um, and then throughout the year, every year, um, what we're also asking you to do is to update it now for, this, for the 1920 school year. You're going to go in and you're going to update your school annual data and you're going to update your school calendar. And I'll show you exactly how that's done in just a minute. Um, so you're basically going to be telling us this is the day school started, this is the day school ended, and here are all our events that happened throughout the year. And you can really be keeping this updated throughout the year. So if on February 5th you have a snow day, you can go into your school calendar and enter a snow day for February 5th. Um, so you don't have to do it all at the end of the year. Um, but now that we're just rolling this out, we'll be asking you to, to make sure it's all correct now at the end of the year. Um, and after you've updated your calendar, you'll then submit at the end of the year, every year, you'll submit your EOI records for all your students. Um, and then you'll review some determination reports um, and some reports to make sure your calendar is correct. And I'll, I'll be showing you those as well. Um, so again, the main thing is you'll update your annual data and your school calendar throughout the year. Um, and then at the end of the year, you'll ensure that your calendar is complete and you go ahead and upload your EOI reports and then your EOI records and then report, review some reports. Some exceptions that are considerations I'll point out and we'll see that when we go look online. Um, but realize that uh, we know that 12th grade may have a different last day than, every, than all your other grades. And so there'll be an opportunity for you to enter that. And again, that's used for the same purpose. By you telling us that 12th grade ended you know, a week earlier, two weeks earlier, we'll know that those students shouldn't be counted for those last two weeks in terms of their uh, enroll, their attendance or their absences. Um, and then similarly for uh, kindergarten, we know uh, there'll be, actually kindergarten is now um, entered separately. So we'll show you how you can enter a different first day of school uh, for kindergarten. Um, 
As I mentioned before, it's very important that your for every student record that your EOI entry and exit date is correct. So for every student, it's really important that you know and you have an accurate record in your EOI of when that student entered school and when that student exited school. As I mentioned before, um, we'll calculate absentee rate based on your attendance and absence fields. Um, we are not going to use the attendance and absence fields as a second check. There, this was actually in the video I talked about this, but we're not going to do this this year. We may do it next year, um, but we will next year be helping you just kind of use the number of half days in attendance and absence to make sure that the entry date and the exit date that you enter for a student seems to align with the number of half days of attendance and absence or hours of attendance and absence that you enter. Um, but for this year, um, we, we won't be having that second check. And then I talked about absentee being calculated as a ratio. Okay. So I'm going to go into a demo, but let me again see if there's any other questions I want to answer before I do that. So there's a question. I'm sorry if I missed it. Do we choose to report only hours or only days or a combination of the two allowed? So you should only be, for any given school, you should only report, you'll set up your calendar in either hours or days, either one. When you report your EOI record for each student, they'll report all your students in your school the same way, either using hours or days. But they don't, this is gonna be confusing, they don't have to necessarily match. What I mean is that you can set up your calendar with hours. So you can set up, and we'll, we'll see it in a minute, um, that my school is open this number of hours every day and their calendar can be set up based on hours when you submit your EOI, EOI record for each student the half the, the days in attendance the attendance and absentee information can be in half days so even though you set up your calendar in hours you can still enter your EOI student records using half days and there's a question about um, <clears throat> the uh, webinar, whether this be available after, and this will be recorded. So we will be posting the recording and I'm sure we'll be sending out a link to everybody so you can view the recording as well. Okay, so let me do a live demo. And again, Melissa, um, chime in if I'm missing anything. So I am logged into I4C and I come into I4C, I could have started on my homepage, but I didn't, but I'm gonna go back to the homepage and hopefully I didn't time out here. I did time out, so I'm gonna log back in. So I'm going to log into I4C, and I'm going to go in here as a system administrator. And for this example, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start out by selecting Conway. And um, I hope Conway doesn't mind me borrowing them as, a, as an example. This is in, a test, in the test system, so we're looking at test data. Um, under the schools menu item at the top of I4C, you'll see in addition to school annual data, there's now an option called school annual calendar. I still recommend that you start with school annual data. Um, you can get to the calendar from the school annual data page. So I would always start with school annual data. And this will list out all your schools and what you've seen before, your annual data saying <clears throat> where you verify what the minimum and maximum grade is. You verify that it's got the right principal name. You can specify whether you've got full-time kindergarten. Um, you can get to the school calendar page from this annual data page by clicking calendar. So this is just brings you to the same place, just clicking calendar here on the left. So the first step you wanna do in the school annual data, and that you've done this in the past, is again, making sure that you've got the right minimum maximum grades, that you've got full day kindergarten checked off. If you've got full day kindergarten, that you've got the right principal name and email in there. Um, <clears throat> I do know that there might be a bug right now to change the principal name, so we're, gonna, we're working on that. Um, so if you run into that problem, know that it should be fixed uh, later, either this week or early next week. Um, the additional column in this school annual data that you might not have seen in the past is the calendar type. And so here's where you specify whether you want to define your calendar in days or hours. And a lot of schools this year in particular because of the pandemic shorten the number of days but are meeting the requirements based on hours. And so this allows you to do to say that, that you're going to tell us how many hours you're open throughout the year. I'm going to start with days, though, so assuming that you're still doing it in days, and then we'll come back in a minute and look at a calendar type of hours. So if I click on calendar next to Conway Elementary School, 
which is a K to six school, <clears throat> you'll see that it comes up and it should have a default calendar started for you. And the calendar is going to tell you that your school started on a certain date and ended on a certain date. And that was for kindergarten. And um, we've identified three different buckets of grade ranges that you need to enter data for. And it depends on your school. So you may only have one or two of these buckets. Um, the buckets are kindergarten. And so a kindergarten bucket can have its own start and end date. There's a bucket for grades one through six. Um, and so whatever grades within one through six you have in your school, there's a start and end date for that. And then you're not seeing it here because the school only has grades kindergarten through six. But if you had a high school, you would also see seven through 12 um, as a grade range. Or if you were a K to eight school, you would see um, um, a grade range of seven to 12 um, to cover your grades seven and eight. Mike, I just wanted to jump in and say this particular screen, it's high school. So you're not going to see a high school on this screen. High schools would have their own screen. But like you say, if you have a K-8 school, you're going to see all three of those grade ranges, K-1 to 6 and then 7 to 12. And that's, say you have a K-7 school, I don't know that there's any out there, you would still see that 7 to 12, even though you don't offer 8 and you obviously don't offer grades 9 through 12 because the way those grade ranges are set up is based on the minimum required hours as determined by uh, admin rule, which uh, are broken down by kindergarten, grades one through six, and then grades seven through 12 have required minimum hours per school year. So that's why we have those three grade ranges, grade ranges set up like that. So even if your school doesn't have all the grades in that grade range, if it falls within that grade range, you'll see it there on that screen. So I just wanted to point that out in case anybody was wondering. No, thank you, Melissa. And <clears throat> just to give another example to that point, I just switched to Kentucky Valley, where the Great Books, the Great Brooks School is grades five to eight. <clears throat> so as Melissa said, we have those three ranges. So what we're gonna see is one range for grades one through six um, and another one through for seven through twelve, because to carry grades five through eight. Both those buckets are required. And so I click on calendar for Great Brook School. Um, we'll see that there's one bucket for grade one through six and another bucket for seven through 12. And as Melissa said, the, although those are the grade ranges, the system knows that for Great Brook School, which is a five to eight school, that this start date and end date applies to grades five and six. Even though it says one to six, we know that for the Great Brook School, it's only applying for the school, the grades that are applicable to Great Brook, which are five and six, and that this range would be applying to Great Brook School's grades seven and eight. And again, as Melissa said, that's due to a legislative requirement that allows you to have different ranges um, based on different hours based on those ranges. Most likely, Great Brook, Great Brook is going to have the exact same start and end dates for grades. Um, all their grades five through eight. Um, and so these will likely likely be similar. They likely will have the same events for all um, grades. And so they won't have to enter multiple uh, events. The events will apply to all grade ranges. Um, so um, do realize, we realize that that's a little bit confusing, um, but hopefully between the two of us, we didn't confuse you even more and it makes some sense. So let me go back again to my Conway Elementary School. And so this is again a K to six range. Um, again, we've got two buckets, one for kindergarten now and one for grades one through six. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that the start and end dates were correct for those two grade ranges. And you know, it might be in Kennett that uh, in Conway Elementary School that kindergarten actually didn't start on the 30th. You know, maybe kindergarten started one week after the rest of the school. And so in that case, I would just click edit. And I would say instead of starting on 930, we actually or 830, excuse me, we actually started on 96. And before I click save, the other thing I should have pointed out is that You'll see, as I mentioned earlier, that the system now calculates the number of days in session, or in this case, half days in session. 
So the system had calculated that based on the start date of 8.30 and the end date of 6.19, and based on all these events that we down, have down here, that there are 370 half days in the year based on a start date and end date and days you're closed. As soon as I update this one for kindergarten, we should see that this number goes down because we're now saying this, these kindergartners started one week later. So if I click save, we see it went down to 362. Now it's interesting, it didn't go from 370, even though I started one week later, you might have thought that would be five days or 10 half days, but it only went down eight half days. And that's because the system already knew that there was no school on Labor Day on 2-9, on 9-2. Um, and so by changing the date back one week, the system already knew there was one vacation day, so it really only had to subtract four days uh, for those kindergartners. And that's why it went down four days or eight half days to 362. <clears throat> so again, first step, make sure your start date and end date is correct for each one of your grade ranges. Um, you know, if your school ended early this year, then you could indicate that. And, and I may give an example of that. I'll give that an example of that later when we look at hours. The second thing you want to do is make sure all the events are right. So you were closed for Labor Day, you were closed for Columbus Day. You know, maybe you had um, an emergency closing on the day after Columbus Day, maybe there was something wrong with the, you know, the maintenance system in the school. And so I'm gonna add an event as if we had a, some type of early release on the day after Columbus Day. So I'm gonna say we had an early release. Um, actually, maybe I'll even call it a maintenance emergency. And I'll say that this was on 1015 and that um, we did have schools not closed because students came in for the first few, first few hours. And so we'll say early release due to maintenance at noon. Um, and so what we'll see, um, because school is not closed, we'll see that we now track this event so that we know that um, the school had people had to leave early, but because the kids were there for at least half the day and school wasn't closed, these numbers didn't change 370 and 362. If you weren't aware, um, as long as a student is there in school for half the day, they still get counted for the full day of, of, of instruction or attendance. But let's do another example. Let's say the day after that, just to make it easier for me in thinking about days, um, that there was a PD day for teachers and that students didn't, weren't in school. And so in this case, we would enter that there might have been a, a professional development workshop day. And we'll say that this was on. 10, 16, um, and that this day school was closed because the students weren't there, just the teachers were. No students in school. And I'm gonna say this is only, I didn't mention this before, but you can specify um, whether this is for one school, like Conway Elementary where I'm looking, or you could apply this to all your schools, in which case it should be added to all your schools within your district. So I'm gonna insert this event, Tells me it was added, professional development workshop, school was closed. And so now we see that, that the number of half days went down by two because we had a day that was where the school was closed. The same thing would happen in snow days. So if I added some snow days, all of a sudden you would see the number of half days went down. You know, maybe you had five snow days and in addition, you extended the school to the end of the year. So you would add your snow days and then you would update the school end date to indicate that the new end date was you know, 625 or whatever. Let me pause for a minute again, and I'm um, Melissa, if you saw any questions, or I can look through myself as well. Yep, I'm answering some as we go. Oh, great. Um, I do know that there's been a several questions about uh, preschool, um, and so please know that the preschool calendar for our purposes is gonna follow the kindergarten calendar. Um, so you don't have to enter separate information about preschool. Preschool students aren't, we don't, schools don't receive adequacy funding for the preschool attendance. Um, so it's not critical that those dates are um, um, are exact. Um, so for the purposes of this year, at least we're just gonna use kindergarten. We may in the future offer you the ability to make specifications just related to preschool. But for now, we treat them as kindergartners. And Melissa, correct me if I said that wrong. Nope, that's right. 
So, so that's the basic step for the calendar. Go in here and you'll add the begin date and the end date. You can update any of those dates that may be incorrect. Um, you make sure that your events are correct. Um, you know, the big thing, the most important thing when you're adding events is that you indicate if the students were in school for at least half the day, um, that school is not closed. And the impact of that means that you, you still get credit for the being open that day for their, their total number of days uh, in session. Um, if the school, if their students aren't there, then obviously you want to say school is closed. Yes. Um, the other thing important that I mentioned already is that when you add these events, realize you can add them to all your schools at once. So if all your schools have the same uh, Columbus Day off, you'll just enter it once. You won't have to enter it five times. But let me go ahead now and I'm going to instead say we want to report Conway Elementary School, not in days, but we want to report Conway Elementary School in hours. So I went back to the school count annual data page and now I'm going to click edit. And we're going to change Conway Elementary School instead of being in hours, in days, excuse me, it's going to be reported in hours. And I'm going to click Save. And so now when I go and I click on the calendar for Conway Elementary School, and now you'll see it says hours here, they're reporting the calendar by hours, you'll see that the calendar is switched and it looks a little bit different. Now what you'll see is we still have the same start and end dates that we had before, um, although the kindergarten was reverted back to the original start date. Um, but you'll see that we now have an, an area to indicate the number of hours every day of the week that the student was in school and receiving instruction. And it's important that you, you know, your district office should know this, um, but when you're talking about hours of instruction um, for reporting in hours, it's just that, it's hours of instruction. So you don't count, for example, the lunchtime as part of the hours of instruction. Um, so, and then you'll also notice now for all the events, there's something that there's new columns that show you hours of instruction, and that's for each grade range that you are applicable for this school. So hours of instruction for kindergarten and hours of instruction for one through grades one through six. So again, the first thing you'll want to do is make sure that the start dates and the end dates are correct. Um, you know, maybe because this school actually has full day kindergarten, the number of hours is incorrect for kindergartners. Again, maybe they started a week later. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to edit it. And if we look up here right now, we see 457 hours of instruction for the students. But if I click edit here <clears throat> and I say instead of two and a half hours, really these kindergartners are actually in school for five hours a day. Maybe they get to school a little bit later and change that to five. Um, and let me just save that. And so now what we're going to see is that this 457 hours of instruction jumps way up to 915. And so that's because the students were actually in school five hours each day. And so again, you know, the system is able to calculate it and the system knows that if they started on 830 and they ended on 619 and they were in this number of hours of school every day, um, it then also knows that it needs to subtract hours on Labor Day because the students weren't in school on Labor Day. It needs to subtract the hours between this start date and this end date because students were in school, were not in school on Columbus Day, et cetera. All of that gets updated when it calculates the total number of hours. Again, if I you know, had the same example as we did before and we said kindergartners just didn't really start on 8.30, but in, in reality, they started um, on 9.6. Um, so now basically, hopefully my math is right, but because we know they are weren't in Labor Day, but they were never there on Labor Day, so that day didn't even count before. Um, but what we do know is there should be four more days of school um, that they, four less days of school that these students were involved, which is 20 hours. So we should see that this drops from 2915 to 895 because we're going to be, because they start, they're starting a week later. So they're losing five hours of instruction for four of those days. The fifth day was already pulled out because it was Labor Day. So let's see if this works right. And hopefully I didn't lie to you, but nope, they're 895. And this is good because I didn't even try this beforehand. I got lucky. Um, not lucky. It's, uh, it worked because we've got some great developers in the background that did a lot of good work. Um, so again, you see that the number of hours is updated because now they started one week later. Um, I'm going to talk about changes to hours um, halfway through the year, and this would be the same thing for days, um, but I'm going to do that in just a minute. Um, we'll, we'll take a look. Let's talk about events a little bit more again. Um, so events for when you're talking about a calendar in hours, you have to tell us if a school, school was, if students were in school for part of the day, you have to tell us how many hours they were in school. 
And so in this example, remember we had that maintenance emergency. I'm going to edit this because really for a school, this school tracking hours, we have to specify exactly how many hours the students were enrolled um, or in school during that day. And so maybe the kindergartners were there for 2.5 hours because they came a half an hour later and the um, kids in grades one through five were there for three hours during that maintenance emergency before we had to send them all home. Um, there's a bug in the system. Um, so we're not going to see these numbers change 895 and 1006 yet. Um, but I'm going to, they should change and this will be fixed next week. And, and I'll show you how we'll, we'll make sure it gets updated correctly. Um, so we just added back 2.5 hours because before it said there were no, there were zero hours that day. Now we're saying in reality there was 2.5 and there were zero hours for grades three. In reality, there were, there were actually three because we just updated it to three hours. Um, if I go ahead and edit the kindergarten field and I'm not going to change any of these days, it's just this is going to force the system to recalculate these numbers. Or maybe they actually they already did. I completely apologize. I thought this wasn't working, but maybe it is. Um, it already was working, so I didn't have to do that. Um, the number of hours is 897. So this was changed when I added the 2.5, and this number as well, 109.5, was changed when I added the three hours here. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, let me just try another example, another couple of examples, just to make sure um, it's, it, is, it is making sense. Um, again, the number of hours for kindergarten is 897 and for uh, grades one through five is 1009.5. Let's add in a snow day and I'm just going to give that snow day um, on 1017 just to make my life a little bit easier. Um, so let's say there was a snow day. It was a very early snow. It was on 1017. Oops. And um, there was no school because it was a snow day. And it was a snow day the whole day. So there was no school. So school was closed. No day. And I'm just going to make this apply for Conway right now. So we're adding a snow day. So now this number should decrease by one day or one, one hours of one, the hours associated with one day. So when I insert this event, We now see that this was reduced by five hours, and this one was by five point or five hours as well. Um, no, I'm sorry, five point five hours for grades one through six, because that's how many hours per day. Um, and so, really, the you know the main um, focus again will be make sure you have all your events in, entered here, and that for any event that the school was students were in school for some period of time that you specify the number of hours they were there that day. All of this information, once again, is used to calculate exactly how many hours existed throughout the year. Um, <clears throat> and, then it, and then it will also, <clears throat> excuse me, then it will also be used for calculating ADM with your EOI records. So let me pause once again, just to see if there's any other questions I can answer. And Melissa, feel free to chime in if there's anything you wanted to add. Yeah, I'm answering a few now. Like there's one from Susan Cross about um, getting an error message too many hours entered uh, for kindergarten. We do currently have the fields maxed. So there, due to state law, there are maximum hours that certain grade ranges can be in, in instruction. So if your grade range is a kindergarten grade range, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the exact total number of hours, um, but let's say nine through 12 or, or seven through 12. The maximum number of hours a student can be in instruction in grades seven through 12 based on state law is six hours. So if you try and enter seven hours, then it's not going to let you. Now I should say, I do understand that charter schools, that's not always the case with charter schools. So we are going to be updating this just so that charter schools can add additional hours beyond those that are, are restricted. Uh, but for other districts, for traditional districts, you will be stuck if you try and enter hours greater than those that are allowed by law. So I just wanted to point that part out. <clears throat> um, let me go through some of these other ones. And I, I'm, listen, I'm not sure if you've already answered these, um, but I'm sure other folks may want the answer if, if not. Um, 
there's a question about can you remove days that may be listed and, and if this is a, i'm assuming the question is about events that don't really that are incorrect and by all means you should remove them so you know if you didn't have a holiday res a recess on this day or you know maybe you had originally had a spring recess but the spring recess didn't happen you should go click on edit for the spring recess and then click delete and again you can delete this for um, all schools or just for the one school um, and you can go ahead and then delete that event and again the days will be adjusted because of the fact that, that that school wasn't closed that day <clears throat> or the hours so yes if there are events that are listed here that didn't really happen you should absolutely get delete those um, um, if your students use a blizzard bag for a snow day um, so in that case, um, school was in session. So you can enter it as a snow day, but you should also enter that school was not closed. Um, and that'll have the impact of um, counting that day as a day of instruction. You don't have to enter it, I believe, and Melissa, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, you know, for your own record keeping, it might be nice to add that snow day, but to indicate that the school was, was not closed and you'll still get credit um, and then again, if you're doing it with hours, you'll have to specify the number of hours a school um, is typically open so the students get credit for the right number of hours. Um, there's a question about what's the advantage of going with hours. Um, so, you know, school is supposed to be open for a certain number of half days or, or hours. And um, sometimes if you, especially this year where schools closed early, they might not be open for enough days. And so that's part of the reason schools would want to enter the number of hours because uh, you can, you know, schools are typically spend more hours of instruction per day than you would have to um, to meet the, the state minimum. Um, so by closing early, um, but reporting hours, you're in, you're show, you're be able to demonstrate that you were still open for the required number of instructional hours um, throughout the year. So hopefully that helps. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is um, you can also add grade ra uh, ranges of time. That, uh, ra sorry, ranges uh, for a grade for a grade range. You can add a, you can add a date range um, if the amount of time changed. So for example. You know, maybe your, your schools were students were receiving five and a half hours of instruction every day in grades uh, one through six. But maybe because of the pandemic, things changed in March. Um, and so I could actually add a new hour range, and I'll just do this as an example. And maybe um, from, we'll say March 15th, 2020, until the end of the year, which had been maybe um, as was 619 that for grades one through six they actually weren't receiving five and a half hours of instruction every day um, maybe they were receiving five hours of instruction monday and tuesday um, on wednesday maybe we only did a short day so two hours of instruction um, to let the students you know build up some of their social emotional needs or, or have some time off um, and then zero on saturday and sunday so it could be that in the middle of the year that changed and so you have the ability and we can add a comment um change in hours oops, due to pandemic and we'll say for conway and we'll insert this range oops i need to make sure i add for conway and say I needed to uncheck the NA. I forgot to uncheck the NA. And so now we'll see that there's a record from 8.30 to 3.14, where there are five hours every day. And we'll see that there is a record from 3.15 to 6.19, where there was five hours, but only two hours on Wednesdays. Um, and in this case, we're actually seeing because of this, we don't have enough hours. So this would be one way to see that you're not having enough hours. Um, but um, hopefully you did have enough hours from the beginning of the year to the end of the year um, based on whatever hours were appropriate. And so, you know, maybe it wasn't two, maybe I missed it. Maybe I put that in incorrectly. Instead of two hours, it was actually four hours uh, on that day. And if I save that, we'll see if that gives us enough hours to the end of the year. Um, and it does. So now we had enough hours. So 
um, you know, hopefully that was reality. It was five hours and maybe there was just one hour off a day um, on Wednesdays. Um, but the point is um, you can put in ranges here if, if this the number of hours per day changed halfway through the year. Um, when I did that, um, I think there might have been a question. Yeah. Um, just to make sure that was clear, when, when you add the range, I by putting the range, this new range starting at 315, it automatically changed the prior range so it ended at 314. I mean, that way it made it consecutive from 830 to 314, and then the new range from 315 to 619. So two pieces that we have to think about. One is setting up your calendar, and that's basically what we've just gone through. Um, entering the start and end date of school for each grade range, whether it's kindergarten, first through sixth, et cetera. Um, making sure for hours you specify the number of hours each one of those days that students were in, receiving instruction. Um, entering the events so that, um, for any day where there was no instruction or for any day that there was a shorter period of instruction. So that's the first step. It's the, the first thing is setting up your calendar so that you have this information that tells us what days of the year you're open um, for instruction and how many hours each one of those days. <clears throat> if you're reporting in days, it's you know what days were you open and which days were you closed. It doesn't. <clears throat> the second thing you, that you need to think about is when you submit the end of year file, the EOI, you're going to tell us for each student what their start date, their entry date into school was, and what their exit date was. <clears throat> and then you'll report for them the number of half days in session or half days absent. As I mentioned before, that half days in session, half days absence could also be hours in session and hours absent, uh, hours in attendance and hours absent. Those are two separate things. Setting up this calendar and entering the EOI are two separate things. <clears throat> we use them together. And what we use to get to the map to bring them together is the entry date and the exit date. <clears throat> the, from the EOI, the student entry date and the student exit date. So I've said this a couple of times. I'm just trying to say it a few times, but hopefully it sinks in. It doesn't matter as long as you, whether you set up your calendar in hours or in days. <clears throat> when you send us the EOI records and you say this student entered this day and exited this day, we will be able to calculate the total number of hours that student was in school or the total number of days the student was in school. It won't matter. As long as in the EOI, all you, have to, all you have to do is tell us the entry date and the exit date. And, you know, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to see if I can get to this easy enough. I just want to bring up the data dictionary because I think especially for some of you who are new to this, it might help. And I would like to add, it, so we're not using the date or rather the data that you all submit to us that tells us the attendance and absence data for your students that you submit in the EOI. We're not using that for ADM purposes or adequacy aid purposes. We are using that for other reporting purposes, specifically uh, to um, absenteeism, to report absenteeism. So it is important that what you do report in the EOI is still accurate. Even though we're not using it for ADM, we are using it for other reporting that is also gonna be a reflection on your schools and your districts. So you definitely wanna make sure that what you report to us in those fields is accurate to the best of your ability. Um, but it, as Mike says, what you put there is not going to affect your adequacy or your ADM. That is all going to be based on making sure that your students' entry dates and exit dates are accurate and that your school open and closed dates are accurate. So that students who are th with you the full year, they should have an entry date that's the same as the first day of school and they should have no exit date. So that, that way we know, okay, the student was there for the full year. That means they were there between this date and this date, therefore 1 ADM. And that's what the system is going to calculate for you. And I don't know, Mike, I've been answering questions, so I don't know if you did or not. Did you point out the uh, last day for seniors field for high schools? I haven't, but I can do that in just a minute. <clears throat> yeah, so that, because that's another piece that's always caused problems for districts in the past is seniors who end early. Uh, they were always getting shorted on ADM because they were, they didn't have enough half days in attendance uh, because they weren't there for, say, the last week of school. But we do now have a field specifically for high schools. You're not going to see it in any of the schools other than your high school. That It's a field that says last day for seniors. You're going to put in there the last day that your 12th graders were in school. And all students who are grade 12, that's going to be their last day of school. 
So they're going to have one ADM, even if the attendance and absences that you report for us don't equal the total number of half days or the total number of hours that you're telling us here in your calendar. Because we're going to say, okay, this student was in 12th grade. They started on the first day. They were there through this day. Therefore, they're one ADM. You're not going to get shorted for those students anymore. But we do need you to fill in that field the last mm -hmm. day for seniors. So if you haven't yet, you definitely want to go in to your calendar and make sure that that gets populated correctly. If the last day for seniors was the same as everybody else, which this year that's been the case in some districts, just put in the same day as your school end date. But you do want to put something in that field so we make sure that we're getting those students calculated correctly. Great. <clears throat> Thank you, Melissa. Um, and so, and here is, if so, again, I just to make sure everybody saw it. So if I go to the school annual data page and I'm seeing my schools, if I have a high school, and I click on the calendar for my high school, you'll see within the high school, there's a, there's one extra field that we didn't see before, and that's the last day for seniors. And that's where you would just edit that record and add the date. The thing I was trying to, that we both were trying to explain, and I'm just gonna try one last time using the visuals here, is that again, it doesn't, what we're trying to say is it doesn't matter whether you tell us hours or days. As long as you set up the calendar correctly here with hours and days, when you submit your EOI, we're going to use the entry date right here. This is your EOI file and the exit date for each one of your students. And we're going to be able to determine how many days that school student was enrolled just based on their entry date and their exit date in combination with the calendar that you've defined. And so um, it doesn't matter what you could have one school set to hours, a different school set to days. And we will always just be looking at that calendar combined with the entry date and the exit date. Separate from calculating ADM, you will need to put in the half days in attendance or half days absence. Again, this can be done in half days, it can be done in hours, either one is okay. We're not gonna be using these two fields for um, ADM, but we will be using these two fields to calculate the ratio between these to determine the absenteeism for students. I and mean, so it is important these are right, um, but they won't be used for ADM. And, and you know, even if you specify calendar, your calendars and hours, so you specify this in hours for Con Conway Elementary School, it's totally fine that these half days in attendance and absences are, are submitted in half days. Um, they, so hopefully that's clear. Um, and so I'm just looking at some of the questions. And so again, there is a question. Um, for the number of um, days and again uh, you know here when you're if you are entering these in half days when you're submitting your EOI um, it should just be the total number of half days a student was in attendance and absence um, and and, uh, and it won't matter whether that total is 358 or 360 because we're only going to be using it as the ratio between the two okay so I think I'm going to stop here in terms of the calendar. Um, you know, we know this is new. Uh, we know there'll be additional questions. Definitely reach out to us. Um, what I think I want to do at this point um, is I'm going to flip back to the slides for a minute, and then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you uh, where, where there's some reports that you want to be looking at. Um, <clears throat> so as a reminder of the next steps, the first thing you need to be doing again is reviewing and correcting your school calendars. Um, once you've got your calendars all set up, you'll be able to verify your calendar and go ahead and submit your EOI. Um, and then once your EOI is submitted, we'll be asking you to, as you always should be, reviewing some re determination reports to make sure that your ADMs look correct. Um, but you know, we want you to play, pay an, an even closer attention to these reports this year um, to make sure they're, they're as you expect. And again, I'll show you those in a minute. Just drilling down a little bit more detail when you're the, in terms of the next steps and updating the annual um, the school calendar. Um, for all schools, you'll choose school annual data. You'll want to verify that the information is correct, like the principal and the grade range. You'll want to update your calendar type if you want to change it from days to hours. Um, and then you want to click on calendar for each one of those um, schools to make sure that your calendar is set up correctly. And when you're done reviewing it, you'll want to confirm that it's complete. If you're reporting by days, 
you'll want to do two main things. Make sure your end dates are correct. Your start and end dates are correct for the year, as we just saw, and then add any events. So I'm just repeating what we just saw. And then for hours, you'll want to, again, switch your annual data to indicate that it's by hours. You'll want to click on the calendar. And then here, you'll need to update the number of hours that students were in school every day of the week. Um, if there's certain days throughout the year where the hours were different, then you'll have to enter those events. So if there were, you know, you had a one Wednesday every month where the students um, left early because of a PD day, then you'll want to add in events for every one of those days during the year. <clears throat> and then finally, once you've got your calendar all set up and once you've, you'll need to verify a report, and then once uh, you've entered your EOI records, you'll want to be verifying your reports. And so let me just show those briefly here. Oops. Um, if I go back to the I4C system, um, it, under reporting, you should all be familiar, many of you, most of you are probably familiar with the fact that there are district batch reports that you have to verify. Um, and so for the EOI submission, I want to point out a couple that are you know, very critical in terms of the calendars. So the first report that I want to point out is that there's a, report, a new report that's called district calendar report. And you'll want to verify your district, you'll need to verify your district calendar before you're able to certify and, and verify across your district all your EOI submissions. Um, so it's important that early in the process of the end of year, once you've updated your calendar, that you come into the end of the year enrollment, you come to the district reports, and you view your district calendar. And the district calendar basically is just going to tell you the total number of days or hours, depending on what you reported um, in the calendar, that you set up. And so uh, in this case, you'll see that you know, these are the number of hours, the number of days that were set up for the school. And you know, these a couple of these I did in hours, other ones I did in days. Um, you will click the checkbox and confirm report, and the, this will confirm that your calendar was set up correctly. Once you've set up, once you've confirmed it, um, then you'll be able to go ahead and verify your end of year batches, but you'll have to confirm that report first. The other reports that we wanted to point out, um, one is the AD, any of these ADM reports you'll want to review fairly closely. So take a look at the ADM report, including FNR, the end of year determination sign off, <clears throat> and also this one called ADM by student count. These three reports are ones that you'll want to make sure that you know, if you thought the vast majority of your students were in school all year, that you're sh that they're showing that you have a, a full ADM for all those students. Um, obviously, if you've got questions as you're looking at these reports, please reach out to us. Um, the other thing I wanted, to, I should have pointed out earlier, was there is a help document on here if you haven't seen it already. Um, so when you're on the calendar page for a given school, actually even on the annual data page, um, you'll see something that says uh, calendar instructions. So this calendar instruction opens a PDF. I actually already opened up the PDF. Um, and this is a several page document that walks you through some of what I showed you as well. Um, so feel free to look at that help document as well as another tool to help understand how to enter the data. So the final slide here is just information about how to reach us, um, <clears throat> Melissa and her team. Uh, so please uh, you know, use this. Uh, we'll Again, we'll send out a link to everybody with a recording to the webinar, as well as these slides, which you already should have received. Um, but there's multiple ways to, to get help from submitting a ticket to um, talking to your own IFRC coordinator, who many of you are yourselves, um, uh, or to calling as well. So please reach out and don't, don't struggle. So I think that's about it. Um, it's just one o'clock. I think what I'll do now is just take a look at the questions and see if there's any other questions we can help answer um, for everybody. Uh, and then Melissa as well, if you've got anything else you want to add in, please do. Mike, there is one question which I didn't want to try and answer because I think it's more of a visual thing, but there is a question about a state waiver and how to enter a state waiver uh, for days when school was closed, but students are still getting um, 
credit for the hour. So it's especially this year with the whole COVID situation, I'm sure that's a situation that a lot of districts might be in. So could you demonstrate that? Sure. <clears throat> You're going to have to correct me if I do this wrong. Um, but we're in I here as a Conway Elementary School. <clears throat> and so we should be able to add a new event. And I don't remember which days of the week we're actually talking about, uh, which specific days it was, but there is um, now an item here. Find it. A state waiver granted. And so you can enter state wa waiver granted, and you could say that perhaps it was, I don't remember exactly the date, say it was 3 2 2019, um, and that um, school, the school, in fact, students were given credit for five hours for. Oops. Sorry about that. Sorry, my screen is flying everywhere. Let me try it one more time. Um, I would choose the event type of state waiver granted. I would say that the waiver was granted for 3 to 2020 and that even though students weren't physically in school they were still given credit for five hours for kindergarten and 5.5 for grades one through six i would say that school was not closed um, and say state if you want to add it again although it's already described there it's state waiver credit I could say all schools, or in this case, I'll just say Conway, and I can insert the event. So, um, so I apologize. I guess we actually have to say school is closed, but you're getting a waiver for that. Yeah, I think this is one of the events that's a little bit buggy. Uh, so, and this is one that I've been working with IT to try and clear up exactly how it's going to work. So I wasn't sure if they had fixed it yet, so I apologize. Um, at this point, if your students are receiving credit for hours missed, oh, I had this worked out in my head how to do this and I forget. Well, let me get back to you all <laughs> with the answer on that about how to deal with a state waiver um, because it's it's really most going to impact you especially if you have hours because we want to make sure that you're getting credit for those hours um, but I will look into it and when we send out um, if I don't know by the time we send out the email you know it sort of covers everything that we, we just did here and sort of gives you the link to stuff uh, then I will find out after that and get that information to you so that you know how, what to do in the situation if you do have a waiver uh, if we don't have it working by the end of today we should have it working by the end of at least next week would be my assumption. So sorry about that. I didn't, hope we didn't confuse anybody. It will be through the event screen here. It's just a matter of fine tuning exactly how it's gonna work. Thanks, Melissa. Um, and thanks everyone for bearing with us while we're still making some changes to the system as we find these types of items. And you know that's why your feedback is very valuable. So please, anytime you run into issues, uh, let us know. So because most likely another school might be having the same question or the same issue, and you know helps us to to make those changes. Yeah, and I do want to uh, just also make a couple more mentions about what's currently in production. So there are a few things that are in production that currently do need to be fixed that we are aware of. So I'm just going to point those out to you right now. Uh, if you are a school that has all three grade ranges, so grade K one to six and seven to twelve. Uh, previously, for whatever reason, that grade one to six grade range wasn't showing up for you. It is showing up in this screen now for you, but it's not yet showing up in the calendar of events. So your calendar of events is still only showing K and seven to 12. That middle column for grades one to six is missing. That is going to be fixed. We do have a script ready for that. It will be rolled out next Thursday, so June 11th. So at that time, you'll wanna come back, revisit your calendar of events, if you're, especially if you're doing hours, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that those hours are all correct in there for your grades one through six. So again, that's if you have all three grades, or grade ranges, I should say, you're gonna to wanna to come back to this calendar and just double check that, that column if you're reporting in hours. Definitely come back as well if you're, if you're reporting in days just to make sure that everything's still copacetic, but for hours especially, you wanna come back and double check that. 
also, there is a situation where some schools and some districts are finding it that it, excuse me, I'm babbling, are not able to change their school from days to hours. This is an, another um, one that we are aware of and we do have a fix for. And again, that is also going to come out next Thursday. Next Thursday is our next deployment date for changes to I4C. So that's why it's not this week, but it will be next week. So if you are waiting to change a school from days to hours, by next uh, mid-afternoon next Thursday, you should be able to do that. Uh, but again, that is another one that we're aware of. I also know that all a whole bunch of EOIs that people have tried to upload have come up with validation errors. And I do not know what is causing that validation error. My suspicion is it's probably tied to the fact that we now do have multiple unit types um, for how you can report, be it hours or half days. I think that probably just got missed somewhere in translation. And so I foresee getting your submissions and the submissions are all great. And then it's hitting an attendance column and it's going, wait a minute, I don't know what this means. And then it's freezing. Uh, I don't know that that's the case. That's just my suspicion. So I have put in a ticket to our IT folks to take a look at that and get that fixed. So yes, I do know that you all are getting validation errors. Some did not, so I'm not sure how that happened. But for those of you who are, Again, I am aware of it and we are working to get that fixed for you so that we can get rid of those validation errors and you can actually get to working on any other actual errors you may actually have. So that's all I know of at this point related to the EOI enrollment, uh, related to the EOI academic, which is divorced from this entirely. We are still working on getting those Title I statuses updated in your school annual data. I think when we flipped over to this new version of the school annual data, it reverted to an earlier version of the Title I table. So we just have to get that refreshed from the current table for this, this current school year. Uh, it is definitely there. It's on the radar. And they know we need to get that fixed so that you all can get your EOI academics in there. But just to let you know, we are working on that as well. OK. Any other questions, Melissa, that we need to answer now? I don't. So I'm, I've been scrolling through them, hoping to grab any, but um, any that we don't answer now, we will definitely answer in in our follow-up email. At least we'll try to, to the best of our ability. Great. Well, thank you everybody much, everybody for attending. Again, please reach out to us uh, if you've got questions and look for an email coming out uh, shortly that has a recording to this webinar, has maybe some more answers to some of your questions, and then a, a future date as well. Uh, we'll have a little more information about the waiver event. Take care, um, stay safe everyone, and have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you.